welcome, welcome to Ikate's Crossing. Okay, I'm very, very spoiled. A beautiful gift from a beautiful soul. Now, most of you know that I've been working with the Swagatun Tarot. Okay, so you know that I've been working with this deck. Okay, by, um, by Pankura Agarwal. Agarwal. Okay, so spoke been speaking to the creator due to circumstances in regards to the deck. So absolutely am loving the Swagatum Tarot. And I cannot wait to reorder to get the um, Emperor card for the deck. But anyway, in the meantime, I'm loving it. Gives great messages. Like having the Emperor card hasn't really, um, not having it, should I say, hasn't hindered the readings at all. Okay, the message comes through in different ways. Absolutely love this deck. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Okay, so I received in the mail this. Now, having that there, let me see if this works better. How do I get rid of this? Oh, that's better. Okay, Wisdom of the Epics of Hind. Okay comes in a beautiful two-piece box now I must remember that always comes in a beautiful two-piece box it's beautifully done it's got that on the back so here it shows three cards of course it's got the barcode okay it is a US games deck okay so let me read the back here this intriguing one minute, let me just fix up my glasses so I can read it for you. It's a bit blo blo blurry. Right. This intriguing deck and book set presents insight from Indian stories, teachings, sutras, and legends, as well as the wisdom from the classic Hindu epics, the Ramahanayana and the Mahabharata. The colourful 50-card deck includes 25 female and 25 male cards. For each, the illustrated book offers the story, hypnosis, questions to explore, actions to take, and messages for the reader. Wisdom from the Epics of Hind can be used by anyone as a dynamic self-help tool for therapeutic purposes, or as a powerful oracle deck for divination and inspiration. Absolutely stunning deck. I did have a look at it. As you can see, I pulled it out and unwrapped it. It came in shrink-wrapped, so I've undone all that. So, it's, like I said, it's a beautiful two-piece box. Comes with an incredible guidebook. Okay. Has um, a lot of information per card, of course. Now, I haven't really dived into it yet, but it is a big book. Has got 171 pages when you when um, it does talk about um, the artist, of course. The artist being Rahul Das. My, uh, Mumbai based artist Rahul Das has been honing his skills in concept art for the past several years originally an art director Rahul has been blending his artistic skills with his creative experience in print publications since about 2007 bringing about a perfect balance of his two passions Oh, Rahul is currently associated with the Indian Quarterly Magazine as an art director and is working on his next solo art exhibition in Mumbai. And then the author has over 15 years experience in divination. She is a self-taught tarot, oracle and angel card reader. Formerly trained as a hypnotherapist and acupuncturist, energy and crystal healer and nutritionist. She also holds an MBA degree in hospital management and a master's degree in psychology. <coughs> Pankura has trained many diviners and healers over the last 10 years. She also regularly lectures at various institutions on topics ranging from health, nutrition, parenting, pain and anger management, to spirituality, meditation and more. She was born and brought up in India, currently based in the UK. Her first commercial project as an author was her self-published book, Karma Kitchen, on how to make everyday food Ayurvedic. Oh, wow. Okay, wow, that's that's interesting. 
So yeah, like I said, there's some spreads in here. Guidance spread, which is a five card spread. There's a yin and yang, which is a four card spread. It's a massive spread daily definition. So you can pick a single card, four card, or five. Nice and simple. I love that. Or oh, she does have a relationship spread, which has eight cards. She's got an eight card spread. How you see me, what you bring to this relationship. This is what is positive about you what can you do to improve our relationship how I see you what do I bring to this relationship this is what is positive about me and what can I do to improve our relationship Ooh. guidance read what do I need to let go of what do I need to embrace what is my greatest challenge that I need to overcome what do I need to be seen my outcome and then the yin and yang positive shows the feminine strength and the part that needs to heal positive yang shows you the strength of the masculine side and then the side that you need to heal that's an interesting one wow okay so to Paula oh it's so nice isn't it? as you can see it's personally signed I'm so spoiled it's beautiful absolutely beautiful okay so at the front it says the auspicious of all that is auspicious who is the means of accomplishing all desires and who is the refuge of all the consort of the three-eyed shiva the fair one salutations to you o narayana sister of lord vishnu mm. interesting now it does talk about um hind was a name for india used by persians and arabs in ancient times it meant the land beyond the hindu kush mountains or the land that lay beyond the Sindhu river the people that were there for referred to as Hindus the religion that was born and practiced on that land was called Sanatana Dharma roughly translating to eternal duty as it contained a set of practices and rituals followed by all to live their highest empowering potential over time it came to be called Hinduism every person born was considered a Hindu it was not possible to become a or or unbecome a Hindu because how does one become or unbecome a set of divine duties? The most famous epics from Hinduism are the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. Hinduism also has a seemingly inexhaustible array of scriptures, epics, and teachings such as the Vedas, the Puranas, the Upan Upanishads, the Sutras, and more. The theme of this oracle is derived from the various epics of Hind. All those stories from the Mahabharata and the Ramayana do dominate the deck. These epic stories and scriptures used to be part of an oral tradition passed on through the ages. They were recorded in writings on palm leaves much later in history. These stories have various versions, even as the central theme and characters are maintained perfectly and cons consistently. They take on the flavour of the regions through which they have travelled. I have picked the versions that are most respected and celebrated for their authenticity in India. These stories and epics also shape the development of anyone who grows up in India, irrespective of their cultural backgrounds and or religious beliefs. The stories form and affect our cultural norms and language as we refer to them, and their lessons in our daily conversations. We name our children after these great characters, hoping they would just be as divine, noble, or heroic. We still hold the villains in contempt, using their examples to prevent our loved ones from committing errors, and we pray to the gods our epics exult. I grew up in India, and a lot of my understanding of New Age wisdom comes from the plethora of mythological stories that I absorbed growing up. All 50 cards of this oracle are based on important stories of great Indian epics, and mythological stories that stem from Hinduism, Sanatana Dharma. In my practice as a hypnotherapist, healer, and diviner, I often use and recommend the use of oracle cards. My main focus with the form of therapy I practice is not only to pro provide immediate relief, but also to make my clients think and question themselves and to become self-reliant. I believe these three are the su surest routes to cath catharsis and thus healing. The text accompanying each card consists of the story, questions to ask yourself, actions to take, and message. 
25 female cards, 25 male cards. The back design is the same, so you can shuffle them together and use them as one complete energy, or you can separate them and do them as yin or yang side air. So yeah, there's a lot of ways you can use this deck. So as soon as you receive the cards, take them out of the packaging, hold them with both your hands, thank them for the help they're about to give you, infuse the cards with the intent that you choose to use them for, the highest good of all, including yourself. Before every reading, close your eyes, visualize universe, universal energy, recharging your entire body, take deep, deliberate breaths, calm and center yourself, and then begin. Whenever you are ready, gently shuffle the cards and spread them out face down. For your first reading, pull out three cards as a blessing from the deck. See pages 163, 169 for detailed instructions on Epic of Hidden Spreads. After every reading, think cards in the universe, your masters and yourself. So we'll do that at the end. We'll do a blessing from the deck. Because I haven't done that yet. All I've done is look at the card, had a quick look at the cards and have a read of the book to sort of look at that okay so the first one we have here I'm just going to do the first one here okay Annapurna's nourishment one day goddess Parvati had an argument with her consort Lord Shiva Shiva said that everything was maya an illusion on earth but she stressed that food was beyond illusion it was very real when Shiva began mocking her she disappeared to teach him a lesson her absence caused all crops on earth to die and food vanish from the world when Shiva saw his followers suffer with hunger, he realized Parvati was right about food from being beyond illusion. When he began searching for her, he found that there existed a single kitchen in the ancient city of Kashi, where food was still available. He immediately understood that it was where none other than his beloved Parvati was hiding, as Annapurna, provider of wholesome nourishment. Shiva disguised as the beggar went to her and begged her, begged for food. Annapurna Annapurna saw through his dis disguise. She forgave him and returned him with him while restoring food back on earth. To this day, she is prayed to before a meal. Her pictures adorn kitchens and waste of food is seen as an insult to her. Questions to ask yourself. Are you eating according to the needs of your body? Do you find yourself wasting food? What, are your, what can you, your contribution be to reduce hunger in the world? Do you feel gratitude for the food or drink available to you? Actions to take. Number one, start saying a prayer of gratitude before every meal. Number two, consciously reduce personal food wastage. Number three, feed a hungry person or animal today. Number four, start working on improving your relationship with food. It is how you think about food and how you use or abuse food that can seriously impact you and your metabolism. Number five, try to cook at least one meal a day. It can do magical things to you. The message is your situation will heal with a change in diet. Um, your metabolism needs improving. Start by choosing peace over pain in any situation. And number three, you are being blessed by abundance. Use it wisely. Now, when I think of um, nourishment in a spiritual sense, it's important that you nourish your soul. And that can also mean by the people that you spend time with, can be about your environment and the way that you... Um, react to situations and how you um, maybe surf online maybe the web pages that you go to or the groups that you're involved in all those things can nourish your soul making sure you're not with um, it's important that you are not with toxic people that you are nourished in your interactions online as well as in the physical world around you just some things to think about anyway so that is the first card there okay so let's have a look at the rest of the imagery isn't the artwork just stunning artwork is just beautiful
Ja, and now we're going on to the masculine card. Male card. Take a moment. That's the back of the cards. Okay. Let's just take a moment. Breathe in, breathe out. Connecting with the energies of the deck. Asking for a blessing, a message, blessing, message, a message with blessings. Okay, one card flew out. Let's have a look and see which three popped out. Card number one. Interesting. Bagalaman Bagalamuki's silence. And when I look at this and I think of being still, being silent is going to be a very important aspect of working with this deck. Not being rushed, just being slow, being quiet, being still. You know, making sure my mind is still. Devotion, Sita's devotion. So being devoted to the deck also. You know, being in devotion. Being, again, you get that silent, honouring, respect type of energy there. Wow, I love that. And the last one is love. Mandodari's love. So it's about um, love. So being silent, respect, honouring, being still, you know, devoting yourself to the deck, to the stories, to the uh, messages, and coming from a place of the heart, being open with love. Wow, what a beautiful message to reflect on today. Oh, I love that. I love that. Silence, devotion, and love. Wow. That's beautiful. Really, really beautiful. So let's have a look and see what the quick, let's see what the message is for each of these cards in the book. I'm not going to worry about all the stories and all that sort of thing. So the first one is silence.
So the message are, your powers are increasing as you speak with conviction. Your words have the power to heal or destroy. Speak with, so oh, that talks about love as well. It's interesting. So this is the silence, remember. Your golden period is about to begin. Your choice of words, thoughts and actions decide how well you live when the golden phase ends. So even with silence, it reminds us of the words that we must use. And then when we're talking about devotion, strong person, let your strength become visible to you. You will be set free by reducing your want of material things. Focus on the love you feel within you for yourself and for your loved one. You'll find that is enough. So love seems to be the like, the big theme here. It's all about opening your heart. And I think this deck is going to do that. It's all about being able to sort of open your heart to, to receive the healing you need so that you can move forward on your life. Interesting. You're worthy of being loved exactly as you are rethink the relationship you're in at the moment either change the person or change the rules i am lovable i am lovable so love seems to be the really big theme here for this deck i think it's a deck that shows a lot as being created with love i know this deck was very much created with love okay and i think it gives love it shows love it allows us the messages that we get no matter what they are even the um the stuff that may not seem positive is still given with love the message is still given with love so i think that's a really big thing to take from here oh i love i'm gonna love working with this deck i can't wait to dive a little bit deeper into it um, work slowly through it I think this is going to be a very um, personal journey for me as um, I continue my finishing up the exploration of the Swagatam Tarot and I can't wait to see what messages that they sort of tie in together so it's gonna be interesting to see what they're paired like so that'll be another video so that's it from me don't forget to check the links down below check the links on my channel like subscribe and ring the bell so you know when the next video will be uploaded Take care and blessed be.